In this week's parasha, parasha Schukas, Klal Yisrael is complaining that they have no water. And why did you take us out of Mitzrayim to bring us to this barren place with no water? Moshe and Aaron go, they fall on their faces, HaKadosh Baruch Hu appears to them, and tells them, speak to the rock. And we all know the story, since we're children, that Moshe hit the rock. Twice, out forth came tons of water, and Klal Yisrael had what to drink. What is the, what's the deal? How did Moshe Rabbeinu not listen to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? We know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to him, Since you didn't believe in me, therefore you can't go into Eretz Yisrael, into the land that I've given to Klal Yisrael. What's going on over here in this story? And I think if you look at the words of the Pesukim, there's a fascinating revelation. The Pasuk says, Vayomer lehem shimu no hamorim, amin hazela hatsa noci lechem mayim, vayarem Moshe as yado vayachas asela b'mateu pa'amayim. Moshe Rabbeinu refers to Klal Yisrael as rebels. He says, yeah, you want to see water from the rock? And he picks up his staff and he hits the rock twice. You know, we can always get production out of people by hitting them, by pushing them, by forcing them into something that they're not comfortable with. But it doesn't mean that you've actually gotten to them. You've just gotten to their production. What HaKadosh Baruch Hu was saying to Moshe Rabbeinu was, I know that the people are in a tough spot where they don't have water, and I know they're complaining. Speak to the rock. Talk, dialogue, listen, speak. Moshe Rabbeinu was frustrated, and I'm only saying this because the Torah gives us license to learn from our avos. Moshe Rabbeinu was frustrated, and he hit the rock. Chas Shalom, it doesn't mean a frustration like you and I are frustrated. But on his level, Moshe Rabbeinu was frustrated, and it manifested itself in him hitting the rock. And he got a lot of production, but he also called Klal Yisrael rebels. And that's not a person that you can have as a leader. He can't take them into Eretz Yisrael because a leader can't be somebody that sees his flock in a negative light. And this is what HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, if you listen carefully to the words, Vayomer Hashem HaMoshev HaRa'an Yan lo he'emantem bi You didn't believe in me. What does it mean they didn't believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Could it be possible that Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron HaKohen didn't believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu? And the answer is that as leaders, as parents, as teachers, as people of influence in our community, we have to believe that HaKadosh Baruch Hu resides within every single one of us. And so the way that we relate to people has to be as godly. There is no such thing as giving up hope. How could you give up hope on somebody? How could you say, I don't believe in that person? If you say, I don't believe in that person, you're saying, I don't believe in the Rebbe Shalom. Because we are all godly creatures. And so speak softly, dialogue, listen. Don't hit them to get production, because you'll get what you want and you'll win the battle, but you'll have lost the war. The story goes of the Baal Shem Tov, that one of the big misnagdim in the early times of the Baal Shem Tov would often speak out against the Baal Shem. One time the Baal Shem Tov came to his town dressed as a peasant, nobody knew who he was, and he started telling stories. It was early in the morning and he started telling stories and he was a wonderful storyteller. And all the people of the town didn't go to Shachar's and they gathered around him to listen to the stories. Of course, when the Rav of the Shul showed up to Shul that morning, the Shul wasn't open. The Shamas hadn't even opened it because nobody was there. And so he tried to find out what was going on and he found the Shamas eventually came to Shul and he said, oh, there's this wonderful storyteller. And the Rav summoned the Baal Shem Tov to him, not knowing that it was the Baal Shem Tov. He summoned the Baal Shem Tov to him and he started giving him harsh musr. And he said, how could you tell people stories before davening and you're taking away from shachars and how could you do such a terrible thing? And the Baal Shem Tov looked at him and he said, I want to tell you a story. There was once a farmer, and he was sitting and tilling the land, and as he was tilling the land, a businessman came by and he was riding along on his horse. And the businessman looked very frustrated. And he said to this businessman, you look very frustrated, what's bothering you? And he said, no matter what I do, I can't get my horse to neigh. My horse is silent the entire time that I'm riding. And so the farmer looks at the horse, and he looks at the rider, and he says, let go of the reins. And as soon as the businessman let go of the reins, all of a sudden the horse started neighing and braying, and it was a wonderful sight to behold. And the Baal Shem Tov looked at this Rav and he said to him the same thing. He said, the reason why you don't hear your townspeople coming to Shachris and crying out is because you're holding those reins so tight, giving them such strong musr and telling them the way life should be. Just let go of the reins a little bit and you'll see tremendous growth, tremendous flourishing. It takes a lot of Emunah and HaKadosh Baruch Hu to believe that the person that you're talking to has HaKadosh Baruch Hu inside of him. And sometimes all we need to do is let go a little bit 
and we'll see something beautiful erupt.